Hi, my name is Thomas Spencer. This is thebibleguy.com and thebibleguyblog.com. Okay, now I know we're going to start chapter one of this book, Revelation, the Final Separation, on January 1st, but I thought I'd go ahead and get the little first articles of the book out of the way. This is the forward in the book, and, and the truth is I'm so darn excited I can hardly stand it, so I'm, I'm going to at least go ahead and give you the forward. And the forward is actually the path on how I found the, uh, the materials that we're using. So I just want to ask you a question. What would the odds be that I would acquire one book out of 50 that was privately printed over a hundred years ago and it has no copyright date, it has no ISBN number, it has no number for a library's Dewey Decimal System. Um, what would the odds be? that I would find out of maybe less than 50 books printed 100 years ago, privately, that I would get one of those. Now, how would the odds increase that in the, that in the back of that book is a 100-year-old timeline that's just tucked into the back cover now, uh, not glued in, not sewn in, it's just tucked into the back cover. This timeline has stayed in this book for over a hundred years. Who knows how many people have had this book? Who knows where this book went from one family to another? Somebody died that gets this book. And, and I finally get it at the thrift store. And this parchment is just stuck into the back of it. Well, I have been a treasure hunter since I was the age of five. I would go dig up old bottles, blue bottles, green bottles, uh, look to see if there's dates on the back of them. I'd go and and sneak in to old abandoned creepy houses to see if I might find something cool or find something of value or whatever. So I've been a treasure hunter. Now, now when I was 15, my treasure hunter changed a little bit because I started hunting for treasure something else. I had these thoughts in my mind about, wait a minute, wh where did we come from? And what are we doing here? What's our purpose on this earth? And where do, where do we go after we die? I began to seek, uh, search for other treasures. Those uh, searches were answered and I was born again, born of the spirit by God. And then my treasure hunting changed directions again, for I was introduced to the Holy Bible. Now, now the Bible became my treasure hunt. Now, if you were to if if you were to take your Bible and just open it right up in the middle, you're going to be pretty close to my favorite verse. It's Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. What's that got to do with the treasure hunter? The word of God, as I read it, is a lamp unto my feet. I can see where I'm standing. I'm sure of where I'm at. And it's a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I can see where I'm going. So now I am treasure hunter of the hundredth degree now. So in 2005, I was hunting for old hardback books okay i had a thing for really old hardback books and i i um that's how i want you to know this is a real miracle of what you're holding in your hand i go into a thrift store and i find no no i was drawn to this book matter of fact i was drawn to this book the first and the last by ira surface now here's the deal though I took this book home, and I put it in my library, put it on the shelf, and I didn't read it. Oh, I looked at the first couple of pages. And for the next four years, I moved twice. I packed this book in, a, in my, my books in a box, moved them, unpacked them, put them on the shelf, packed them up again, moved to another place, unpacked them, put them on the shelf. It wasn't until 2009 <laughs> 
that I was really studying end time events, the book of Revelation, and trying to put Daniel, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation together. Anyhow, again, I'm drawn to this book. I go and I, I open this book up and I see there's no copyright or anything. And I'm reading through it and I actually took my marking pen. This is how I read. I took my marking pen, many colors, and I start underlining the different paths of thinking that this person has. Now I'm through chapter two and I'm thinking, oh my Lord, I am marking up an original with colored pencils. So then I flip through the book and out of the back cover of the book falls this parchment paper. And I open it up and it is the timeline dated 1921 that he hand drew and it was an aid in helping understand understand his book so i guess i just want you to know the value of what we have our hands on so who is this author he's ira surface and all through his book he would mention that none of the prophecies mentioned in the bible yet to come none of the prophecies that he mentions in his book can take place until israel becomes a nation I had to keep reminding myself that. Why? This is written in 1920, 1919. Israel becomes a nation in 1948. Now, Ira Surface was born in uh, 1860, and he died in 1944. Four years before Israel became a nation. And now, his book is current. So, I had to remind myself that all the time. And I also had to remind myself that he wrote this book before any computers. Before any Bible software where you could compare verses quickly, rapidly. He wrote it before the regurgitation of diluted and altered internet information. This is an original. And so is the timeline that you have. Value it like I do. May it change your life. That's the forward.